Tom Walter, it's great to see you again, my friend. How are you feeling these days? It's good to be here, Kenny. Always a pleasure to visit with you. Uh, I feel pretty good. You know, I get a little strong, a little less sore every day, and my energy and my appetite are uh, recovering slowly. I'm sure that's the case. When you go into something that you went through, the anticipation has to be probably more difficult than the procedure, I would imagine, because of the great unknown. No, absolutely. There's certainly the anxiety involved with it. You know, there. With any surgery, there's certainly risks, but that was nothing that really ever entered my mind. But, but the unknown of how I would recover, and, and really the the opening day being so close to surgery. Surgery was February 7th, opening day February 18th. So knowing that I only had 11 days uh, between the surgery and opening day, that was that was causing most of the anxiety. You wake up, I would imagine sore. I would imagine wondering what happened. I would imagine. Yeah, the first uh, the first couple hours, kind of in and out of the days, you know, they bring you out of the anesthesia, and um, I just remember I saw my mom's face first, and uh, I just remember asking her how Kevin was doing, and, and she told me that, that Kevin uh, doing beautifully, that the kidney was quote unquote pink and functioning functioning well. So that was a good that was a good day. Kevin is Kevin Jordan, and not to tell the whole story all over again, but a young man you recruited to Wake Forest, who was drafted by the New York Yankees in the 19th round, and have to recruit him against other schools and against professional baseball. He elects to come, and it's really not long after problems start to arise on a basis, and not too long he knows he has to have a kidney replacement. Yeah, I mean, when the, the first time he had heard kidney replacement was his first doctor's appointment at Wake Forest. He, he had been going to the doctors at Emory Hospital um, in Atlanta to, know, to a nephrologist there, and when he came to Wake to be a, a, you know, a freshman on our baseball team, we had a meet with Barry Friedman, who was the, the chief nephrologist at Wake Forest Baptist, which is a great hospital. He was very fortunate between Emory and Wake Forest to be involved with two world-class facilities. Um, but I went to that initial meeting with Dr. Friedman, myself, our trainer, Jeff Strom, his parents, and Kevin. And one of the first three sentences out of Dr. Friedman's mouth were, we're going to get you a transplant as soon as possible. And that was the first time the Jordans had heard that the first time we had heard that, and I remember our trainer and I just looking at each other saying, wow, this is a much bigger deal than we thought. You go through the process. Before you get there, when the match can't be filed within his family, did you just voluntarily say, hey, let me try this, or how did that process happen? Well, in that first appointment, I recognized the fact that, that Kevin had uh, O positive or O negative blood, and I, and I knew that I had O positive blood, so we were in the same blood grouping. And with a kidney transplant, your blood grouping is the first kind of litmus test. So you need to be, if you're not in the same blood group, you can't donate. I mean, you're, you're immediately um, crossed off the list, which is mostly why they start with family members, just because of that blood, that blood type. So uh, I volunteered the test at that time. His father said, well, thanks, we appreciate that, but we've got some good candidates within the family. I don't think it's going to be necessary. You didn't hesitate. All of a sudden you find out, hey, you're a match. Nobody else around here is. And yet, it didn't take you but one or two seconds to say, let's do it. I already made up my mind even previous to finding out. Uh, you know, I had, I had thought long and hard about it. I had done my research. You know, the Internet is great for that stuff these days. Uh, so you can learn a lot about the procedure and the recovery and all that stuff. So um, I had already made up my mind that if, if his family members weren't a match, that I was going to go in there and get tested. And then if I was a match, I would be willing, I would be willing to donate. So there wasn't a time where, where I ever second-guessed the decision. I know your background and your faith and your religion and where you come from, but clearly this is an act of God, regardless from what background you come from. You know, my God says, you know, to love one another and love your neighbor as yourself and, and to give freely and unconditionally for God, that's a cheerful gift. And how much of a role did that play in this decision, subliminally or just overtly? Well, it played an overt role, really. Uh, that's a good way. That's a good word to use, Kenny. Um, you know, I, I truly believe that I was meant to be in New Orleans at the time of the hurricane with that team to try to hold that program together and, and, um, and, and help grow the program at, at a difficult time. And, and likewise, I, I feel like I was meant to be at Wake Forest at this time with this young man. You know, he could have chosen Arizona State. He could have chosen Vanderbilt, South Carolina. He was offered by, you know, by dozens of schools that had a better baseball tradition than we did. Um, but he chose to come to Wake Forest. Um, for a reason, and, and you know, we brought him into our program for a reason because he was a great kid and, and somebody we believed in not only as a baseball player but as an individual. So 
dad called it, I think, divine intervention that his son made this decision to go to Wake Forest. And people like you and I, we believe that. I, I firmly believe that we're in a place at a time, as you just mentioned, for a purpose. And we're there for a reason. We might not get it at the time, but we certainly can see it clearly as time goes on. And I think that was the case here. I don't think there's any question. I, I know in my heart of hearts that I, 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 Kevin Jordan and I were, were destined to be together at this time in our lives. When you look at the, the entire background of how you got to this point, George Washington, UNO, and then going to Wake Forest, and the fans in New Orleans and in Waves and outside of Louisiana need to know who you are, understand what you did, and I don't think a lot of people outside of the very close people affiliated with UNO understand what you went through with the inheritance program from a really good Eddie Bush uh, that wasn't in tatters, but it wasn't great, and then it gets hammered the following year by the storm, and you have to get on the phone and start trying to make arrangements, and in a matter of a day or two, you end up with Las Cruces, and you're able to get just about all your kids to go there, enroll in school, stay in dorms. Come back home, have to go to the West Bank to play games, finally get home, don't have lights, don't have basic facilities, and then within two years, you're in the NCAA tournament. It's a remarkable journey. I'll tell you, it was amazing, and it's a testament to our players there, Kenny. You know all the guys that we had there, mm -hmm. Johnny G. Vitella, T.J. Baxter, Joey Butler, you know, Brian. from the family, which was obviously difficult, but um, that was a good time in my life, and I, I just really am so appreciative to, you know, in both this situation with Kevin and the hurricane, I, I feel fortunate to have been where I was when I, when I was. You know, when you when you get that first big break and you go from George Washington to UNO, you go into the Sun Belt, you're making, finally making a decent wage and, and uh, can, can legitimately support your family, um, you know, you, you don't expect to six months later be living in a trailer next to the field but um but like i said uh, like you said i was meant to be there at that time yep two straight years in the ncaa tournament kind of justified the whole process and rewarded you those who are diligent and stay uh, diligent in what they do and, and stay patient will be rewarded ultimately i believe that happened and then those struggling financially cutbacks have been made to happen i'm stay in touch with a number of people uh, from New Orleans. So it was very difficult for me to leave, but I, but I had to go. You know, it was time. You know, the, the, the program was obviously um, headed in the wrong direction. I feel terrible for the for the players there, but I, you know, I had stuck it out, you know, and, and seen most of the Hurricane guys were gone. You know, the only ones left over were the red shirts. Jared Camarda, Tyrone Weathers were really the only two that went out to Las Cruces with us, and they redshirted. But other than that, you know, all the guys that went to Las Cruces with us had, had gone and graduated. You saw them through. You go to Wake Forest. Uh, digress briefly about what kind of experience that's been for you and your family thus far. Uh, Wake Forest is a special place. You know, the one thing that's been really great about Wake Forest is it's truly a family community. I mean, they, 
the, the school motto is pro humanitate and and they live by those words every day and they take that very seriously it, it's um, it had religious affiliations Baptist affiliations back in the you know the early 1900s all the way as late as 1955 uh, but then when they moved to Winston-Salem from the Raleigh area they broke free from the Baptist but there, you can still feel that that influence that uh, spiritual influence on campus very important and then of course when you look at LSU you have ties here too. Uh, Terry Rooney was part of your staff. He's been part of pulmonary staff and and Paul you know tells a story and, and I and this is part of the human experience. Randy Bush is a wonderful man and a great friend of mine for 30 years and I, I'm working at UNO at the time and when Randy gets run out I'm not very happy because he's a class act and a tremendous man of integrity and so naturally you cast a wary eye on the guy that's coming in. That guy happens to be you. Uh, you come in and it doesn't take more than two days to figure out this is a great guy. It's going to be okay. But if you have an open mind, those kind of things happen. And then, of course, you and Randy, you become friends and you hit it off famously, which I think speaks volumes about the integrity and the character of you two guys. Well, it speaks a lot of Randy, for sure. You know, I reached out to him right when I got the job. I, I had talked to Brian O'Connor, who was at Notre Dame at the time, and Paul Maneri. Um, you know, I had played summer baseball with Brian. And uh, Brian had just recently gotten the UVA job, actually. So I, I was kind of going through through Brian because I knew the relationship between Paul and Randy. And Brian said, hey, look, I don't, I don't think it's a great time to call Randy. You know, this was right after I got hired. He goes, but, but give it a few weeks. He's, you know, he's... No hard feelings. He's in a good place now. He's really happy where he is. So, I, you know, when I finally did reach out to Randy, he was fantastic from, from second one on the phone. Um, you know, the, the, the class of that man just, just oozes through the phone as you're talking to him. He just, what a super guy and a great baseball man. And, you know, I know the Chicago Cubs are really lucky to have him. UNO was really lucky to have the players at UNO loved Randy Bush. You know, Thomas Diamond and guys like that just spoke glowingly of Coach Bush all the time. So, I, you know, I, I have nothing but great feelings and great respect for Coach Bush. And then Paul Maneri, you guys are genuinely friends, and uh, Paul gets a call about Wake Forest, and he gives you the highest recommendation imaginable as he tells the story. No, he sure did. He was a big he was a big reason I got that job. I mean, he knows the football coach there, Jim Grove, really well. They were neighbors, uh, and he knows the athletic director, Ron Wellman, very well. They served on a committee together. So um, Paul's phone call really, really helped my chances of getting that job. I mean, obviously, um, you know, a phone call like that helps you get the interview. You've got to go in and do well in the interview. But the, getting the interview, as you know, is the hardest part. Once you get the interview, then really it's up to you, uh, and that's all you can ask for in any job. But without Coach Maneri, I, I, there's a there's a great chance I never would have got that interview. Yeah, and there's a theme here as we get set to close. Good people help each other. And that's, that's really the theme of this whole discussion that we've had. Uh, Randy Bush turning to you. Uh, Paul Maneri helping you. You helping a number of coaches. You helping kids enormously at UNO. And then giving this gift of life to another young man at Wake Forest. That's really what we're created to be. It's what we're supposed to be, isn't it? Well, absolutely. It's our responsibility, and that's what that's what makes the world go around. I think ultimately every human being's task is to leave the world a little better place. You know, do, do your small part every single day uh, to make the world a little better around you. I mean, I think that's what, that's what we all do. That's what we all need to do, strive to do. Would you do it again if you had to? Oh, without question. I, I'd do it a hundred times over. I mean, this has been a very easy process for me. Um, you know, the, the hardest part really has been all the media attention, really more than anything. I mean, it's been unbelievable, the outpouring from across the country. And I, you know, I try to respond to every email and every letter and every text message I get, and it, it becomes overwhelming at times. There were nights in the hospital where I, I was kind of glad I was up at 3 in the morning because I could have some quiet time just to sit and, and respond to, to people. But it, it's been an amazing story, and, you know, so many people tell these great stories about kidney donations that have affected their life, whether they're the recipient or the donor. I got an, a, a letter from a, a woman the other day who donated her kidney anonymously. I mean, you talk about a hero. She doesn't even know who has her kidney, but mm -hmm. she found out that she didn't need two kidneys, and she went in and, they, and had them remove it, and they put it in somebody. And, you know, to me, that's an unbelievable story. You know, that's, that's the stuff that, that makes, makes life special. Yeah. Well, you've done something very special, and those that care about you deeply, myself included, are very proud of you, and, and we thank you for not only what you've done in our lives, but uh, what you've done for the life of other people and changing their lives. Just keep following that path. You've done great work, my friend. Well, I appreciate it, Kenny. I feel very blessed to have to, to worked with 
and 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 for some unbelievable people, uh, including yourself, and you know to have my parents give me the support they gave through the years, and you know there's just so many people along the way that that mold you into the person you became. I mean, I I wouldn't be sitting here today without you know without people like yourself and my parents and Jim Miller and Randy Bush and Paul Maneri and you know a million other people. So it's uh, it's good every now and again to to uh, to kind of reflect on that and and just appreciate it. In the same breath, I'll say, go Demon Deacons, and God bless you. How's that? I'll take it, Kenny. We'll, we'll need all the luck we can get tonight. We know we've got our hands full with the Tigers, but uh, we're excited about it. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Trey.